It's tax time, everybody's favorite time of the year. <laughs> Accountants are busy crunching numbers these and days. Taxpayers are making sure their money is covered in all areas, including those investments. Today's Your Dime sponsor, it's Wall Street Financial Group, Chief Retirement Strategist and Founder Zach Gray, and Duke Smith Investment Advisor Representative are back. So uh, this is a busy time for accountants and, and maybe guys like you. Tax time's always a busy time. A lot of topics floating around about, hey, can I be more tax efficient? What can I do? I always feel like uh, this time between January 1st and April 15th, it is it too late? <laughs> L like, are now are we just talking about what we do this year for next tax season, or are there still things we can be doing in this three and a half months period of time? There's some things that we can do. Duke, you want to chime in with that? Yeah, there's a few different options. If you've got maybe a little bit too much taxable income for the year, you could do something like make a contribution to a traditional IRA. You've got all the way up until tax time to do that, to receive a deduction for your income last year. Um, you've also got up until that same deadline to make a contribution to maybe top out um, a Roth IRA for 2019. So you do have a little bit of leeway there all the Even way up until tax time. Even though it's 2020? Yep. We can still do it for less. So, like giving to a nonprofit, they always, you know, they're they're hitting it you know, by December 31st. Got to make it yeah. postmarked or to us by December 31st. But in this case, it's different. Yes. Yeah. You know, that April 15th date, a lot different. December 31st is very important for nonprofits. Yep. Also very important for Roth conversions. We can talk about that a little bit later. But it is important to know that there's at least some things that can be done. And if you're thinking about some ways to save, maybe a traditional IRA, maybe a Roth IRA, as Duke just mentioned. Now we know what to do with all that extra yeah. cash we have left oh, around. Yeah. It's great news. Yeah. What Come else? on down. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we need to know and be aware of? Well, I think that this is a good time to also be thinking about, yeah, taxes for last year. And it's not necessarily just this time where we say, we jump for joy, right, and say, well, it's tax time. But it does at least get us thinking about what we could do in 2020 as well, right? Because there is parts to be mentioned about December 31st as mentioned. And we have to be thinking about, okay, what could we do to be a, a little bit more efficient this year? And maybe we should be thinking about, uh, maybe we should kick up those contributions to a 401k or even a Roth 401k. If someone doesn't know if they have a Roth 401k, I would urge them to dive into that a little bit. See if that's an option that they have at their workplace. And as you start to think about Roth conversions, especially if you're over 59 and a half, at that point in time, you should be doing that in the calendar year before December 31st. You know that uh, poster, I used to see this all over the place. I haven't seen it in a long time. It says, everything I need to know about life I learned in kindergarten. <laughs> I kind of feel like everything I need to know about taxes, I learned like when I was 19 and it was working at a shoe store <laughs> and all that I could do to affect taxes was to change the little box in the form I filled out. Was it, am I counting one? Is this two? Is this three? But there's so many other things to think about and worry about, I guess, once you become an adult, huh? <laughs> yes, there is. And uh, whether that's sad or not, I don't know. But oh, it's sad. <laughs> Trust me. Be. You know, but you need to be thinking about, you know, where does your money sit? Is, is it something that's taxable? Is it something more tax deferred, like those 401ks or IRAs? Is it something more tax advantaged, like, you know, a Roth IRA or Roth 401k? And be thinking about not only today, because of course we like to chase the tax deduction, but let's be planning for the future. I mean, let's be thinking about how does this look in, in 10 years, 20 years, even 30 years, depending on when your retirement date is and, and where you're at in life. There's no doubt about that. I know for us, I'm always looking forward to that refund and getting the refund. But then something I was reading on Twitter or something like that was that you want to even out. They were saying, you don't want to get a refund. You don't want to have to owe anything. How is that even possible? Because I've only had to pay or gotten money back. Try to get close to zero as possible. Yeah, how do you do that? You really have to kind of balance out what your deductions are on something like um, your W-2 when you're filling that out. Um, back to what Tim said about checking those boxes and with how many you're actually going to get when it comes tax time. Because if you can balance those out, you will end up fairly close there to not owing or not having to pay. For some people, they like getting that refund. They treat it as a little bonus for the year. But then other people say, you know what, I'm not getting any interest on that. So I want to keep as much of my money throughout the year as possible. That way I can earn interest on it. And then I'll just pay what I owe at the end of the tax, at tax time. Yeah, I think I would rather do that. I got to figure out just not, not how to owe anything. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If we can, well, exactly. Well, guys, thank you. It's hugely helpful information. And yeah. I definitely learned some things that I did not know about when you can add and when you can't. So we'll connect you with more details about these folks and Wall Street Financial at our website. Uh, they have plenty of information and all sorts of resources for you. Just go to CILiving.tv.